let's see what we have. This is a calculation that we use. We use MTP minus the length of the end of the residual limb, so there's nine inches, minus the height of the prosthetic foot, which is a Seattle light that's about an inch and a quarter. So that would bring it to uh, ten and a half, say. And then minus the height of the foot clamp, which, which is an additional two inches. So that makes it twelve and a half. That leaves us with from twelve and a half to eighteen and a half, five inches to work with. So that would give us a maximum of five inches of cylindrical pylon. Um, in this case, I think we're going to go with a small molding cone because once we calculate that out, once we add the molding cone on there, that brings it down to about three and a half inches. That's about a, the right amount of pylon flexibility for a patient this this weight and activity level. Um, <clears throat> now, you insert the molding cone. There's also a calculation in the manual for all this if you if you have to know the numbers. But it's really the, a, a feel that you develop. Another, another important point about it is if you're questioning whether you should use the small or the medium, if you're between two lengths, for example, always go to the smaller molding cone. Because remember, after we vacuum form this prosthesis, we're going to be left with a seam or a union down the whole back side. That we can use to fine tune and adjust the flexibility of the pylon. So if you're questioning whether you should use a medium or a smaller one, always go with the small, leaving you with more cylindrical pylon area and then leave the seam in the back and you can trim it off as you desire when dynamically aligning, aligning the patient or fitting the patient with the prosthesis. That's the whole ticket to this prosthesis, by the way. You can control the dynamics or the, or the flexibility of the pylon during gait analysis and this is what allows you to do it without spending any, any money on expensive componentry. Okay, so now your molding cone is inserted. The next step... Okay, let's stop there. Okay, good. And the next step is tape. What we're going to do is put six layers of tape on the mandrel. There are two reasons for this. Number one, is we know that thermoplastics compress as they cool. So if this material was to compress on the mandrel, when it became time to remove this prosthesis from the, from the mold, including the mandrel, it would compress the material so much that we wouldn't be able to slide it off the cylindrical mandrel. So what will happen is the tape will compress, will, will act, the, the plastic will actually compress into the tape and relieve the stress on the material so that there's no tension on it when you go to remove the model. The second reason why we have to apply tape is because we have to bring up the dimensions of this mandrel so that it'll fit inside the endoflex foot clamp appropriately. And if you notice, what I'm doing is laying a layer of tape down smoothly, snip it off, and then what you want to do is carefully massage it in so that it doesn't wrinkle. Of course, if you have wrinkles in the tape, it's going to affect the dimension of the, of the pylon. Now that's three layers so far, correct? We have to go to six layers. Another thing is after you make your endoflex prosthesis, if the pylon fits snugly in the foot clamp and it looks like it's tight on the outer rim, you want to reduce by one layer of tape. That's four. This is kind of experimentation. We start with six, and if you keep, if you're making them and, they, and you find they're a little tight on the outer rim, you could reduce by one layer. That'll reduce the dimension of the pylon just enough to make it fit for more, more effectively. Uh, you see, remember, now that's five layers, right, Ben? Hard to talk and count at the same time. Um, <coughs> Again, if the pylon is tight on the inner bolt receiving shank of the foot clamp but loose against the outer rim, you want to increase by one layer of tape. Tapes vary in thickness. Uh, we have these tapes available if you want to buy a roll in. It's, of course, it's not expensive. It's just adhesive back paper uh, shipping tape. Um, and as you make your endoflex, if you find they're consistently tight on one side or another, you either increase or decrease by one layer. 
Okay, now you've got the tape laid down on the model. We've also tried other things like heat shrink Teflon and all kinds of things like that, but what happens is they're very expensive and you only get one use out of them. So we've decided to stick with it the way it is. It doesn't really cost us any, any additional time. Now the next step is <clears throat> we're going to apply cotton stock in it to this model. Okay? This model is a little bit larger than the proximal side, so in this case we have to use 3 inch cotton stock in it and trim it down. What we do is take the yardstick, figure out about how much you're going to want for your pylon area. And we'll stitch it down like that and trim off the excess. Smaller models, you can use two inch cotton stock in it, and you don't have to uh, trim it out because two inch cotton stock in it is small enough that it'll fit over the mandrel without having any wrinkles. When you have a little bit larger model, you have to trim your stock in it this way. And we'll stitch this up. Watch me run over my finger. Trim this out. I wish I had a good pair of scissors. I wish you'd go over with a good pair of scissors. Where are the good scissors? It's been trimmed, turn it inside out, and we'll lay it up on the model. Okay, so we've got the six layers of tape. We've trimmed the stockinette down so that it's going to fit snugly over the mandrel. Okay, and now you want to put it on. Now, when you lay up your stockinette, just like in anything else, in this industry. Keep the lines nice and straight. There's two reasons why we do that. First of all, the project looks a little nicer. And secondly, because this prosthesis requires anywhere from two to three thousand pounds of force to remove, the straighter the lines are, the easier it's going to be, be to remove it. Okay? Now, we need also a pin mark so I can remove the tension here and some black tape. Okay, now, the way the layup is, you have a nylon underneath the insert, you have cotton stockinette on the outside. The reason why we use cotton stockinette is one of the biggest secrets of this Endoflex prosthesis. What we use, uh, too big, just a little prick pin, one of those things on there. What we use is cotton stockinette wet to do our vacuum forming. And water happens to be an excellent mold release for these thermoplastic materials, okay? It's an excellent mold release. Number one, it's excellent. Number two, it's free, uh, just about. And the reason why we use cotton stock in that is because cotton will absorb moisture much better than a nylon will or a perlon or any other of these uh, synthetic materials. Okay? So what we're going to do now is first pull back here, remove the tension, make sure that the seam from the stocking from, that's been stitched is even on both sides of the mandrel. Okay? That's ready.